Hey there, photography enthusiasts. Have you ever been told about shooting at the lowest possible ISO for your photographs? Well, we're gonna look closely about why that might not be the best news for your photographs. Let's clear the air about ISO. Unlike shutter speed and aperture, which control the amount of light reaching your camera sensor, ISO adjusts the brightness of your photo by amplifying the signal from the sensor. Think of ISO as your camera's volume knob. It increases the brightness without actually adding light. But beware, higher ISO can introduce noise, especially if your photo was underexposed to begin with. Hi, I'm Taylor Moore, a Canadian landscape and architectural photographer living in sunny Portugal. I share weekly videos packed with photography and video tips. I also take you behind the scenes of Portugal's stunning castles and palaces. If you love exploring beautiful places and chasing light and shadows, hit that subscribe button and join me on this journey. When I started in photography 500 years ago and shooting film, it was evident in the darkroom that a lower ISO or ASA was much better to eliminate grain in your prints. That was then and this is now and camera technology has advanced significantly. Tools like Photoshop and Lightroom have fantastic ways to fix noise. Using the exposure triangle, ISO, shutter speed and aperture is essential to prioritizing what's important for your photograph. Is it freezing the motion, achieving a deep depth of field or a shallow depth of field? Understanding these priorities can help you make the best decision for your settings and for your photograph. Imagine you're shooting a stunning sunset. You might be tempted to keep your ISO at 100 to avoid noise, but if this results in an underexposed photo, the noise will actually be more pronounced. Instead, raise your ISO to properly expose the photo can give you a much cleaner result. The real culprit for noise isn't high ISO, it's a lack of light. <laughs> there are plenty of scenarios where using a higher ISO is beneficial. If you're photographing fast moving subjects like waves or leaves in the wind, Increasing your ISO lets you use a faster shutter speed to freeze that action. This is crucial for handheld shots in low light conditions where camera shake can ruin your photos. Consider this, you're at the beach trying to capture the waves crashing against the rocks. To freeze the motion, you might need a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second. During the golden hour, the light is low and without raising your ISO, your photos might be too dark. Many modern cameras can handle higher ISO quite well, even up to 1600 or 3200 or 6400 and still produce quality images. So don't be afraid to push that ISO when necessary. For instance, I've captured beautiful landscape shots at ISO 800 to freeze moving elements and maintain sharpness. All right, now that we've debunked some ISO myths, let's talk about practical tips for using high ISO effectively. Always aim to properly expose your photos in the camera. Underexposing and then trying to brighten the image in post-processing can make the noise worse. <laughs> Use tools like Topaz, Denoise, and Lightroom's noise reduction features to clean up any noise that does appear while preserving the details in your subject. Shooting in RAW format gives you more flexibility to adjust exposure and reduce noise without degrading image quality. Raw files contain more data in dynamic range, which helps in post-processing. Don't be afraid to use auto ISO, especially when shooting in manual mode. Set your desired shutter speed and aperture and let the camera choose the ISO to ensure proper exposure. This can be particularly useful in changing light conditions. Exposed to the right, ETTR. This technique involves exposing your photo so that the histogram in your camera is pushed to the right, capturing as much light as possible without clipping the highlights. This minimizes noise and retains more detail. Whenever possible, use lenses with larger aperture to let in more light. This allows you to keep your ISO lower while still achieving proper exposure. If your camera or lens has image stabilization, use it to your advantage. This allows you to shoot at slower shutter speeds without introducing blur, which can help keep your ISO lower in low light conditions. Now that you know the truth about ISO, it's time to put this knowledge into practice. Don't let the fear of noise keep you from capturing amazing photographs. Raise that ISO when needed and watch your photography improve. So, a quick recap. 
ISO is like a volume knob for your camera's brightness. Proper exposure is key to minimizing noise. High ISO is necessary for many shooting conditions, especially in low light and when freezing motion. Use noise reduction tools and shoot in RAW for the best results. Experiment with ETTR, large apertures, and camera stabilization for better high ISO performance. Check out our other video on achieving sharpness with any camera to complement what you've learned today. Peace, love, and hockey!